Now look at this implicants. So before talking about implicants, let's talk about covering. So why is implicants important? Is when you are trying to derive the minimal uh, that minimal expression for any given expression, we should find out all the subcubes which are called as essential prime implicants. So in in order to find out essential prime implicants, you should first know what an implicant is. Second, you should know prime implicant, and third one is essential prime implicant because these things play a key role in the minimization. So let's go let's go step by step. So before talking about implicants, I want to talk about covering functions. So just see this. Uh, see with this example, I'll I'll tell you this, and then I'll tell you this point. You please make a note of it later. See. Now, if you look at this, let us say it is a two-variable function. In two-variable function, how many min terms will be there? Totally four. Therefore, zero, one, two, three, four min terms are there. Let us define g to be a function which is having a one at one, zero, one, which means at this point it is having one. and at all the other points it is having zeros right now if you look at f the way f is defined look at the way f is defined f is having 1 1 here and 0 0 here so whenever g is 1 f is 1 so you can say that f is actually covering g which means inside f all the min terms that are present in g are already present or if you look at this the in f contains the min terms 0 and 1 and g contains the min term only 1 which means whatever min terms are present in g are already present in f that is the meaning of it right now watch this a switching function f x1 x2 so on xn is said to cover g x1 x2 so on x2 if f is superset of g which means if f contains all the min terms which are already present in g then it is called f is said to cover g if f assumes true value whenever g does right so which means whenever g is having true value f is having true right now if f covers g if f covers g it means that f is sub superset of g and at the same time if g covers f then it means that g is superset of f when will that happen when both are actually equal sets right then we can say that both are equivalent so if f covers g and at the same time g covers f then f and g are called equivalent Watch this one. Now, let us say G is this. Then, how many functions are possible which will cover G? In order to cover G, wherever G is having one, we have to have one. Therefore, I have kept one here. And all the others are optional. In the other places, either you put you could put zero or one. Therefore, how many functions are possible for F which are covering G? Is in the all the other possibilities, we have two chances: two into two into two. Therefore, eight functions are possible. in general how can you find out number of functions covering a given function is you find out all the min terms of the given function and then in the covering function you you put the, put them as all ones which means we don't have any choice there in the remaining min terms which means whichever are not there in g let us say in the remaining min terms the next function the covering function could take could assume any two values therefore it is 2 into 2 into so on the remaining functions now let's let's see how to derive it if g has x min terms and g is a function of n variables if g is a function of n variables how many elements will be there in this uh, min terms how many elements will be there in this table if g is a function of n variables 2 power n elements will be there right and out of which g is already choosing x min terms therefore uh, how many remaining you know elements will be there for f to choose all these x terms whichever are present in g should all already be present in f therefore f does not have really any choice on x therefore f has choice only on 2 power n minus x which means in the remaining min terms whichever g left out f can assume any two values therefore 2 into 2 into so on these many times so this is the total number of functions which will cover a function g given that both the functions are in n variables and then uh, g has x min terms right it is simple to derive i think see But wherever g is one, f has to be one. Therefore, I am putting in there one. And wherever g is zero, there f could assume anything. Then how many how many max terms are there in g? Which is nothing but how many zeros are there in g? Two power n minus x. Now all these very all these chances at all these locations, f can assume either zero or one. Therefore, two power two power n minus x. Got it? So these many functions are going to cover uh, g. Give me any g. And see this example. I'll just show you. I'll just try to solve it. A 
if f of x equal to wx plus yz, if this is the expression given, then how many functions will be covering f? In order to understand how many functions covering f, you have to understand how many min terms are there in f. So first of all, how many min terms are there are possible with four variables? The total number of min terms possible are 16, right? Now let's see out of this 16, how many min terms has f already chosen? How can we get it? Given the function, convert it to canonical, uh, canonical form, canonical POSOP form, sum of products form. Now in this wx, two terms are missing. What are they? Y and Z, right? So wx is present here, y and z is present here, which means wx followed by yz. And now we don't have two terms. Those two terms can assume any value, which means 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So what we could do is, in place of w and x, we could have 1, 1. The reason is both are you know non-complemented. See, I'm telling you a method by, by which you can quickly arrive at the min terms, number of min terms present in a function. See, in place of wx, I'm putting 0, 0. And in place of uh, y and z, you have four combinations. Therefore, 1, 1, 0, 0, or 1, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, 1, 1. These are all the four combinations for, or these are all the uh, you know min terms which which are uh, we generated from w x, and then y z, y and z are here, w and x are here. Therefore, y and z is one one, and then w x can take any any number of choices. Therefore, zero zero, zero one one one, one zero one one, one 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 one. Right. So this is how we, you can expand it. So maybe you could keep it in mind. So whenever you want to expand it into sum of products, canonical sum of products, you just take the min term or the product term and you just write the combination for it. And in the remaining combinations, whatever is remaining, which means how many variables are remaining, in those combinations, you try to put all the combinations in their positions, right? Now you see that it is already repeated and all the others are unique. See, 1100 is not repeated and 1101 is not repeated. 1110 is not repeated, 111 is not repeated. So they are all unique. So how many min terms are present in F? F is already containing out of 16 min terms which are possible, F is already containing 7 min terms. Therefore, F is containing, F is not containing 9, right? So what happens if any function has to cover F, that function has to have all these 7 min terms. Along with that, it should have 9 more min terms. I mean, it could have any of the nine more min terms like right? or in case of you know subset set theory also you could you could uh, uh, think of it this way if a set is already containing seven elements then how many sets are going to be superset of this set that is the same thing right if the set is already containing seven elements the superset of it should also contain seven elements then how many elements are remaining nine elements in these nine elements uh, the remaining set the set which is covering going to cover this set can take any value which means the number of power sets possible with 9 elements which is nothing but 2 power 9 or if you didn't understand this see already f is having 7 min terms therefore the function which is covering f should also have all the 7 min terms which means all the ones at the 7 locations and how many locations are remaining 9 locations in those 9 locations it could have two possibilities right therefore 2 into 2 into 2 into 9 times so 2 power 9 is the total number of functions which are capable of covering f anyway we could you know, find out the number of functions covering it but my main my intention main intention in teaching about all this is uh, about to know about the implicant so now let's talk about the implicant and then prime implicant and then essential prime implicant and then minimization okay